Hi guys. It is nasty, just yuck, gray, cold, dark, depressing, slit your wrist kind of day. Here in the end times in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas, I'm supposed to be out in Garfield, Texas, starting to cut down a tree today. But for whatever reason, the universe has decided that's not going to happen. So here I am once again, uh, sitting here with my little dog, figuring out what to do with my life as the planet collapses around me here on this Sunday now afternoon, November 18, 2018. So since it's Sunday, uh, I guess I need to do kind of a combination uh, doomsday sermon, we are so fucked, uh, headline of the day, we can throw in a chronicle of the collapse. And anyway, I want to thank Alert Tribes member Huge, Hugh Jazol, Hugh Jazol for uh, sending me this uh, long involved article from Science Reports. And I'm just simply, I'm going to put the link on here and you can read this whole thing. A fascinating study uh, by, who is this, Giovanni Stroma and Corey Bradshaw uh, in Science Reports. I'm going to put the link on and encourage you to read this whole involved story. This is, there's a lot of 50 cent words in here, so we're going to try to up the IQ of Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Uh, and I'm going to read the abstract and the introduction, and you can take it from here. So take it away, uh, Giovanni and Corey. And science reports. Co-extinctions, co-extinctions annihilate planetary life during extreme environmental change. Hmm. Extreme environmental change on this planet? Anyway, first the abstract. Climate change and human activity are dooming species at an unprecedented rate via a plethora of direct and indirect, often synergic, synergic, I thought that was synergetic, anyway, mechanisms. Among these primary extinctions driven by environmental change could be just the tip of an enormous extinction iceberg as our understanding of the importance of ecological interactions in shaping ecosystems identity advances, it is becoming clearer how the disappearance of consumers, <laughs> yes, the disappearance of consumers following the depletion of their resources a process known as co-extinction is more likely the major driver of biodiversity loss. That was a long way of saying that biodiversity loss is happening uh, faster than previously thought and the sixth mass extinction is worse than previously thought. I'm just summing up all of these 50 cent words for you. Okay, although the general relevance of co-extinctions is supported by a sound and robust theoretical background, the challenges in obtaining empirical information about ongoing and past co-extinction events complicate the assessment of their relative contributions to the rapid decline of species diversity even in well-known systems, let alone, let alone at the global scale. By subjecting a large set of virtual Earths to 
different trajectories of extreme environmental change, for example, global heating and cooling, and by tracking species loss up to the complete annihilation of all life, either accounting or not for coextinction processes, we show in their new study how ecological dependencies amplify the direct effects of environmental change on the collapse of planetary diversity by up to 10 times. That was uh, the abstract. So here is the introduction to the study and then you can read the actual study for yourself. Okay. Being in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, as, as we are, uh, it is fitting to quantify the relative contribution of different mechanisms driving catastrophic biodiversity loss. Drivers directly related to anthropogenic, otherwise known as human cause modifications to the biosphere are apparent and well described. Habitat destruction, over-exploitation, and biotic invasions, otherwise known as invasive species. Similarly, the effects of environmental change, which are also being caused by humans, uh, i.e. temperature rise, increased droughts, ocean acidification, etc., can be easily interpreted when the environmental conditions of a certain locality become incompatible with the tolerance limits of their inhabiting species. In many cases, these will go locally extinct, just like fish in an aquarium with a broken thermostat. Even if there are counterexamples of species that have been capable of rapid adaptation to novel environmental conditions. <clears throat> and then on top of all this, yet there are still other more complicated mechanisms that can exacerbate species loss. In particular, it is becoming increasingly evident how biotic interactions in addition to permitting the emergence and maintenance of diversity, also build up complex networks through which the loss of even one species can make more species disappear, a process known as coextinction, and possibly bring entire ecosystems to an unexpected, sudden regime shift, or even total collapse. And uh, I, I'm just, I, I think what they're describing in that is, you know, kind of like the dots between if, uh, if the uh, number of insects collapses, Obviously, the number uh, of birds, particularly the number of, 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 quote, higher animals that feed on the insects are going to uh, collapse with them. And then you better believe the insect-eating birds are, are supplying, you know, other services and, and just how this whole thing just, just mushrooms out of control and, and, until we're so fucked. And this is uh, the, the latest research uh, talking about stuff like this. But getting back to the 50 cents word, 50 cent words. Uh, let's see. So in a simplified view, the idea of coextinction reduces 
to the obvious conclusion that a consumer cannot survive without its resources. And of course, here, guys, you know, you can, you can always make just the ironic uh, connection between human consumers uh, at the grocery store. You know, humans cannot survive without grocery stores. Uh, anyway, I, I'm coloring a little bit out of the lines here. All right. Because resource and consumer interactions in natural systems such as food webs are organized in various hierarchical levels of complexity called trophic levels, it follows that the removal of resources could result in the cascading bottom-up extinction of several higher-level consumers. Several studies based on either simulated or real-world data suggest that we should expect most events of species loss to cause co-extinctions of, uh, of other species, you know, dependent on them. Um, where was I? As corroborated by the worrisome, unnatural rate at which populations and species are now disappearing and which goes far beyond what one expects as a simple consequence of human endeavor. Uh, so not only know what they're talking about, we, we have the direct attacks by humans on the planet, but what they're looking at is all of the hidden cascades of co-extinctions that humans are setting off all over this planet. That once humans put this downward spiral uh, into motion, collapse is inevitable and we and everyone we share the planet with are so fucked. If I'm reading this right. Even, I mean, in fact, even the most resilient species will inevitably fall victim to the synergies among extinction drivers as extreme stresses drive biological communities to collapse. And there's no reason to exclude humans from that sentence. Uh, absolutely no. Uh, even the most resilient species will be driven to collapse, which is exactly what is happening. Furthermore, co-extinctions are often triggered well before the complete loss of one entire species so that even oscillations in the population size of a species could result in the local disappearance of other species depending on the first species. This makes it difficult to be optimistic about the future of species diversity in the ongoing trajectory of global change let alone in the case of additional external planetary scale catastrophes. A previous study contended uh, this idea by using the remarkable tolerance of tardigrades to extreme temperature, pressure, and radiation uh, as a reference to calculate the likelihood of global sterilization of an Earth-like planet following different dramatic astrophysical events, the stunning conclusion of that study is that life on our planet has the potential to survive asteroid impacts, supernovae, and gamma ray bursts. This ostensibly reassuring news 
highlights how some scientists still tend to disregard the role of coextinctions within collapsing communities in driving global biodiversity loss while focusing on individual species tolerance limits as the only criteria relevant to species survival in a changing world. Ecologists know this optimism is not supported quantitatively, but can we estimate the magnitude of the bias? Here we attempt to do this by combining real-world ecological and environmental data to generate several virtual Earths populated by interconnected species interaction networks where we allow species to move and adapt that we then subjected to extreme global environmental change by comparing the scenarios of extinctions based only on species environmental tolerance with others accounting also for co-extinctions, we show that neglecting to consider the cascading effect of biodiversity loss leads to a large overestimation of the robustness of planetary life to global change. There you go. And this goes, this, so then they break this all down. And this is fascinating reading. And uh, I might uh, even just, uh, I'll probably revisit this story on Collapse Chronicles tomorrow. Uh, because it needs to be spread around. But I'll put the link on here for you to figure that out. And with that, I'm going to see if I have the energy to uh, come back with the somewhat ironic uh, Humpty Dumpty tribe welcomes 100 new tribes members and we all know what that means, uh, if I have the energy to, uh, to do that. But welcome aboard uh, our latest 100 new tribes members into the rabbit hole. Smoke them if you got them, guys. We all know why. Bye, guys.